guys the story of the first christmas is so beloved that singers and storytellers across the centuries have mythologized the story in celebration however most of us do not know which of the details are mythical and which of the details are the truths some of us even imagine that the manger scene has snow singing angels many worshipers and even a little drummer boy but none of that has been accounted in the biblical account christmas has become a product of an odd mixture of superstitions of fanciful legends and plain ignorance add to that the commercialization of christmas by the marketers and the politicization of christmas by the cultural wars and what are you left with one big mess so let us try to sort out things together let us take you into a journey to debunk and decipher the myths and the truths behind the story of christmas so here we go guys christmas is around the corner Hmm, fresh cookies, bakes, kalkals, accessories and gifts of course. Bro, look around. There's nothing Christmassy in here. Okay guys, wait. Let's get started. But first, we need like more hands in yeah, here. Yeah. Ho ho ho. ho, ho. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ho ho ho. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus? Seriously? Santa was a common name for Nimrod throughout Asia Minor. This was also the same fire god who came down the chimneys of the ancient pagans, and the same fire god to whom infants were born and eaten in human sacrifice. Among those were once God's people. It all began during the pagan festival to celebrate Thor lives in the north pole and that's why the fiery red coat and the flowy white beard history reads that the good children throughout the year would get gifts for santa claus early american christian families reinvented the scandinavian santa claus to santa claus so that their children not left alone during the winter celebrations god fearing parents however incorporated scripture as the basis so faith won't be compromised for fun ah huh, santa left the building brighten up lighten up dude i'm missing my groove here where's the music i know right where's the music after all what is christmas without carols did you know that carols were sung thousands of years ago in europe but they were not christmas carols they were songs sung the during the winter solstice celebrations as people danced around stone circles Ca do you know the word carol originally means to dance to something the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year and usually occurs on the 22nd of december carols were written and sung during all four seasons but only the tradition of singing them at christmas has actually survived Carols were sung in Latin, a language the normal people could not understand. So, by the Middle Ages, people completely lost interest in Christmas altogether. However, this was changed by Saint Francis of Assisi in the 1200s when he started his nativity plays in Italy, where people sang songs or canticles which told the story during the plays. Traveling minstrels and singers made the carols popular by changing the words and language and wherever they went. By the Victorian times, people started singing carols in the streets and new carol services had begun. A practice which is still continued today. So, how are carols sounding today? Throw the music outside the window. Throw it. She had to say something. Man, it's getting hot in here, isn't it? I know, bring in the snow. And where are the snowmen at? What's in? Snow, ice and Christmas always go together. In the Bible, the story shows us that there is no ice or snow. Snowmen were first known by people to scare away winter evil spirits. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, it's raining disappointments in here. Another bummer. I knew she'd ruin it for us. 
the tree is so bare what did people do back in time to decorate was christmas boring oh no this part of the year was a time of celebration with lots of festivities the romans for example celebrated the harvest festival called saturnalia while the pagan culture of the golden region celebrated the end of uh, winter and the beginning of spring people cut trees firs and pines to remind themselves that soon the winter will be gone and the spring will bring prosperity cookies candies adorned the tree people ate drank and made merry so nothing even remotely close to the birth of jesus forget it buddy he is just trying to get rid of the tree get it buddy christmas is boring christmas well the evergreen fir tree has been used to celebrate christmas and winter festivals for thousands of years pagans have used its branches to decorate their houses during the winter solstice to remind them of the spring which is to come the romans have used the tree to decorate the temples during the festival of saturnalia as history reads the first person to have brought the christmas tree into his house may have been the 16th century german preacher martin luther as the story reads we can see that one night before christmas as he was walking through the forest he had seen the star twinkling through the trees he had found it so beautiful that he had gone home and told his children all about it and how it reminded him of how jesus left the stars of heaven to come to earth during the time of christmas christmas eve was also considered the feast of adam and eve the garden of eden was symbolized by a paradise tree which later went on to become the christmas tree christians continued the practice of bringing christmas trees into their houses which reminded them of the paradise tree in the garden of eden yes we get to keep the tree yes do we get presents i have my list ready i really really want these things christmas is just perfect of course we get gifts we should get gifts I know. yeah i mean we all should get gifts right One of the main reasons we have the custom of giving and receiving presents at Christmas is to remind us of the gifts given to Jesus by the wise men: gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense was a perfume used in Jewish worship, and as a gift, it showed that Jesus would suffer and die. Gold was associated with kings, and as for us Christians, Jesus is the King of Kings. Myrrh was put on dead bodies to embalm them, and as a gift, it showed that Jesus would suffer and die. that was true even at birth our heavenly father plan and purpose the sacrifice of his only son for our sins and so like in all birthdays gifts are for the birthday boy jesus right uh, so no tree no santa no snowman no gifts christmas is boring christians are boring wait that's not true yeah she's back to the spotlight again okay christmas is, is itself is about one great gift that god gave us about 2000 years ago as we read in john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life let's look into god's word to learn about the first christmas luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 12 and they were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flock at night an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid i bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all people today in the town of david a savior has been born to you he is christ the lord this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger So Jesus our Messiah was born in the town of David it wasn't an accident but a fulfillment of his prophecy So was Jesus born in a um, stable or a barn or a cave of course not the bible does not record any of these three places the bible simply says that Jesus was born in a manger and the greek word for manger is kataluma which means guest chamber lodging house or inn and definitely not a cattle shed
We underplay the lowly birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Baby born in a manger, with cattle and sheep around him, no bed, wrapped in rags. Oh no, no. We're talking about the king here, and royalty cannot be lowly, nor for God, the Father's only son. Swaddling clothes were not rags. The priest's clothing born to minister before the Lord in the holy place. The priest who sacrificed the lamb for the burnt offering had blood smeared all over them. They, these clothes were holy and never torn away. These clothes were prepared as strips of cloth to wrap the Torah scrolls. These were also used when a child was circumcised. They were also used when a, in, as wicks in the burning lamps. Young mothers used these strips of linen to wrap the newborn. And therefore, when the, when the angels announced to the shepherds in Luke 2.12, they spoke about the Lamb of God wrapped in the blood of the Lamb, and He would become the sacrificial Lamb. Why shepherds? It's not about the mutton and the price of mutton. The shepherds working there, in fact, took care of the temple flocks, the sheep meant for sacrifice. We can trust that God had a specific purpose for this shepherd audience. And the work they have performed suggests this reason. These men who watched the sheep f for the slaughter received a divine message about the ultimate lamb who would take away the sins of the world through his death and resurrection. So come le now, let's celebrate a meaningful Christmas, for he is the reason for the season. Celebration it is, decorations of course. Shopping indeed, after all, it's the best birthday ever. We always have a color theme, right? So why these colors? Evergreen plants like holly, ivy and mistletoe have been used for thousands of years to decorate and brighten up buildings during the long dark winter. This also reminded them that spring would come and winter wouldn't last forever. The Romans exchanged evergreen branches as a sign of good luck and the ancient Egyptians brought in palm branches into their houses during the midwinter festivals. The paradise tree in the Garden of Eden was a pine tree with red apples tied to it. And that's why the green. An early use of red was apple on the paradise tree. Also represent the color of holly berries and also the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also represent the fall of Adam in the play. That's, and that's why the red. Gold is the color of sun and light, both very important in the dark winter. The gold and red are the colors of fire that you need to keep you warm. And gold was one of the color that one of the present bought to baby Jesus by one of the wise men. And traditionally, it's the color used to show the star that the wise men followed. White is used. With purity and peace in western cultures, the snow of winter is also white. The color blue is often associated with, the, with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Did you know in medieval times, blue dye and paint much more expensive than gold? Mary was often painted wearing blue to show that she was very important. Oh, I love candy cane, sweet peppermint. But is that in or out? The Christmas candy cane originated in Germany about 250 years ago. They started out as straight white sugar sticks. Sometime around 1900, the red stripes were added to, this, uh, to the candy cane and they were flavored with peppermint or wintergreen. The candy maker made the candy in a form of a J to represent the precious name of Jesus who came to the world as our savior. It could also be used as the staff of the good shepherd with which he helps us to get up from the ditches like all sheep who have gone astray. The red stripes on the candy cane represent the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. Every time you see a candy cane, remember the wonder of Jesus and the love that came down at, at Christmas and that his love remains the ultimate and dominant force of our universe today.
Now we know that the true essence of Christmas is not just fun and frolic, tricks and trees. But it is the marvel of a love so divine that came forth into mankind and gave himself for us. That's what it means when we say truly Emmanuel, God is with us. Do not forget folks that Jesus is the reason for this season. May this season of joy help us to encounter the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a new and powerful way in each and every one of our lives. As Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 goes, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That's what excites me, and I hope it excites you all too.